Now, the John Lennon portrait, I've always been a Beatle fan. In fact, the Hard Day's Night album over there, which I'm probably going to end up buying from Michael, which means I'm going to, you know, lose money tonight. I have a photograph when I'm nine years old playing a drum set in my parents' basement in Mooresville Heights, Ohio. And you can see that record sitting on the, you know, the table right next to me because I'm playing along to Hard Day's Night. So, lifelong Beatle fan. And John was always my favorite Beatle. And I had wanted to do a portrait of him for a long time. I live in New York City, right on the same block as the Dakota, where John lived and where, sadly, he was shot. And Yoko still lives there. I walk by this building every day. So, there's a constant memory of, I should say, reminder of John Lennon. You know, Strawberry Fields is right at the end of the block. So, last year was the 25th anniversary of John's death. And I had just finished the Road Series paintings, and I thought, well, you know, this probably is the perfect time to do the Lennon painting. So, it just so happens that I had become friends with a photographer named Alan Tannenbaum. This is a well-established New York photographer, cover of Time, cover of Newsweek. Really has done a lot of great photography over the years. In the last few weeks of John's life, he became friends with John and Yoko. And the last record that John recorded was called Double Fantasy. And when they were doing the video shoots for that record, there was a video for a woman, and I think starting over, Alan had gone to the video shoot as the still photographer to document it. Anyway, so he had tons of great photography that literally was taken 10 days before John was killed. And when I became friends with Alan, I said, you know, I've always wanted to paint a portrait of John Lennon. And I said, I really like your photography because it captures him, sadly, right at the end of his life, but in a very happy time in his life when he had just kind of come back out and released this great record and was public again. So I was inspired by Alan's photography so much that that's how this painting came to be. I literally had a lot of Alan's photos spread out and used those as inspiration and, frankly, as reference to paint the portrait of John. Now, Alan didn't have photos that looked like this, this kind of black and white look. But the idea behind that was, in essence, I had photography of John toward the, well, at the end of his life. But I wanted to present it in a way that America was first introduced to the Beatles, which was the album called Meet the Beatles. And the album cover of Meet the Beatles is their four faces coming out of the dark background. So in essence, the idea behind this was to show John as we last knew him, but show him presented in a way that we were first introduced to him. So it's like a circle of life. And then there's one other thing about this painting, and for those of you that have gone close to it, you would already know this, and for those of you that haven't, you're probably going to want to see, but this is actually a painting of two portraits, because the reflection in the glasses is Yoko. You know, John and Yoko, it's one name, isn't it? You can't say one without the other now. And it was a classic love story, and I wanted to basically have this painting represent the two of them looking at each other. Of course, it's a portrait of John, but there is a little tip of the hat to his life with Yoko, and that is her in the reflection. Now, just as with the Road series, I painted this one in hotel rooms. For the better part of the 2005 tour, I was painting this. Guys in the band would stop by the room every now and then and take a look at the progress. And I can assure you, I spent probably a month just painting the hair on his head because of all those little... And I'm happy to say that I actually had the good fortune to meet Yoko, and I gave her a copy of this. 
and she was very uh, she was very moved by it. And it was actually it was the it was the day before the 25th anniversary of his uh, of his death, um, which is what December 7th. So um, this painting is is very uh, very special to me because of, of what it represents and 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 again it's it's when you have an idea that's kind of been bottled up for a while to have it finally get released as this did it was very satisfying um, now just as I had been painting on last year's tour I'm painting on this year's tour and uh, you know as we speak there's a there's a canvas that's in the works it's actually it's a painting of a carousel it's another idea that I've had trapped in there for about 10 years. You know how people have a, a list of books in, in their head that they're going to read? I have a list of paintings that I want to do. It's, you know, Hopefully I'm going to be around long enough to actually get through this list because I paint very slow. <laughs> so uh, the carousel painting is, is coming along nicely. And, um, you know, maybe this time next year I'll be back here standing on this thing showing the uh, carousel. I also have a painting at home that's a, uh, it's a New York City street scene from the 1920s, and it's a uh, it's a very large canvas, so, so big that it's it's too big to carry on the road. But this um, canvas is uh, is very very special. Ah, and here's the Leonard Skinner guys. Hi guys, Leonard Skinner everybody. Ricky Medlock, lead guitar. Hey, how you doing? This is Mark Mateka, our newest guitarist. Carol, Carol Chase, our background singer. So uh, I just I've just been kind of talking through, uh, telling everybody. I was saying I was saying the yellow guitar is Ricky's. He'll be yeah. here in a little while. He can tell you about it. Actually, you know what's cool about this is because I was painting Ricky's guitar and we were on tour at the same time. We'd be sitting in the dressing room, and Ricky would be practicing, and I'd go, oh, wait a minute, wait, let me see that knob, because I'd be, I'd been spent all day painting the numbers on the knob, and I'd be looking at it, and I even borrowed a few spare parts yeah. from, from yeah. his guitar tech, yeah. Buster, so, That's true. because I really wanted the detail to be, um, to be right on, and it's a 60s special? 1960s special, Les Paul special, yeah. 1960s Les Paul yeah. special. He not he's old bit. I changed it, though. Because his guitar actually has a whammy bar on it. Right, right. And, uh, whammy bar. What's a whammy bar? What's a whammy bar? What's a whammy yeah. bar? It's like a vibrato bar on it, you know, to make the strings like vibrato, you know. There's got to be a guitar a vibrate. with a whammy bar. But it was an old style vibrato bar. It goes down here. It's, no, yeah. And an okay. arm that would come up that way, so. It, it, it's not mounted to this. It's mounted yeah. back in here, right? Right. But the whammy bar was kind of hanging over like this in the reference photos that I took. <laughs> And I said, Ricky, I said, I know that the guitar has a whammy bar, but it's getting in the way of the art. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no whammy bar. bar. Yeah. No bars art. No no bar. Artist privilege. Yes. So, yeah, um, it. yeah it, was, it was fun doing these because everyone was around while these were, yeah. where these were unfolding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just as with Lennon, you know, I remember, the, do you remember the day I finished Lennon? Yep. I was showing it to everybody yeah. at, at a, um, what airport were we, Atlanta? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, see, we don't even Something remember. like that. Yeah. But the day I finished the Lennon canvas, I remember taking it out of the box, and we were standing in the airport, and I was kind of showing it around to everybody. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty special stuff, though. Right, detail. Pretty special. Yeah. It's, it's really been fun because, you know, everybody has, we have this free time. You know, Ian has a full recording rig that he has that he sets up when he's got his free time. Um you know, Ricky's always songwriting, or Ricky's learning scripts to, for his acting career. You know, we've all figured out. A, I'm sorry, Carol is songwriting for her yeah. solo career, and Mark is songwriting for his career. <laughs> so, um, you know, we've all we've all realized that we need to to find something to make creative use of this time. You know, we have the great payoff of being able to to perform these concerts. But I, I got to tell you, that other 22 hours in the day drives you nuts. It, yeah. The other, <laughs> the other 22 hours is what breaks the bands up. It's not oh. the two hours on stage. I mean, it's really, that's the hard part of our work is there's a lot of downtime. So we've all found different ways to, to make use of that. And living on a bus with each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know that whole squeeze?
eating the toothpaste thing, you really, you really learn every little individual thing. Well, I, for one, looking at Michael's stuff, and, and honestly, I think a lot of this tells about road life. I mean, this is like basically the front of the bus and his drum kit. That is actually wasn't that buster like my guitar tech. Yeah. That's his laying on the thing there. That's on his. Yeah, you're looking straight down. You're looking straight down at his like station, his tech station. And it just tells about road life. And I think Michael's done a really good job as far as, you know, telling about what we do and all the days on the road and stuff. Here's, I love the cell phone in this with the crumpled up potato chip bag and all that stuff. I mean, it tells it really just like it is. It really does. It's you know, the thing cool. about this green painting, it, what it really illustrates is, you know, our, our, our life appears to have like a real sense of freedom to it. The reality of it is we, we, we're kind of trapped, and we get kind of shuttled to and fro. And this green painting um, has this road that's disappearing because it feels like we're always going to the next thing. And as soon as you get to the next thing, you're only always trying to reach the next always, thing. Always, always. So this, this green painting really illustrates that it, it is just this kind of, it's this endless, it's this endless kind of, Reaching for something, right? From all of our eyes. Yeah, and um, oh, cool. you know we've all spent a lot of time in that front seat, looking at that <laughs> road, talking on our cell phones, and drinking Mountain Dew. That's why. <laughs> I've always said if I had a five dollar bill for every one of these lines I've counted, I'd be, I wouldn't be in the music business anymore. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Very cool. Right. Well, congratulations, Michael. Yeah, Thank you, Ricky. Thanks. Thanks. There's some amazing stuff in here. Oh, I'm, I want to check it out. Yeah, it looks incredible cool. Beatles stuff over there. Uh, any questions? What was purple in the painting that you did with the hats that you decided to make it purple? You know, that's a very good question. Nothing. <laughs> no. Um, it was almost orange. Because I was thinking maybe I would do, you know, red, orange, yellow. Um, I just thought that the, um, you know, that purple was a strong color. And um, Leon was a very strong personality, and I thought that that it would really lend itself to that. And who's ever seen a purple fire hat? So, <laughs> so right. Well, that is a good way to describe Leon. Yeah. Yeah. What medium? Hey guys. What medium do you like to paint? Uh, work with the most? Is it, is it sketching now? I mean, a lot of these seem like a lot of a lot of sketching. Yeah. Uh, every one of these had. Um, you know, a very uh, involved drawing to start. Um, nothing was really left to chance. Mm -hmm. These guys will tell you that I'm kind of a detail guy. There's other words that you would use to describe that, but <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, but I'll cop to it. Um, so yes, every one of these started as a sketch, but then uh, the painting was done with acrylics. So and and I've used acrylics. Basically, my whole life, I studied a little bit with oils in school, um, but but I always and I always enjoyed acrylics specifically because I'm painting out on the road. Acrylics dry very fast. I literally have a blow dryer plugged in, and as I'm painting, I'm blowing stuff dry because, you know, at the end of the day, it's got to get packed up in the box and go back on the tour bus. So it has to be dry. And oil painting takes months to dry, so I could never. Uh, could never even uh, consider working with that in this context. Are you always going to work in series? Uh, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the road series um, made sense as a series because it was depicting so many scenes. But I'm not painting the the other three Beatles. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm painting a carousel now. Right. Although the carousel, um, when you see the finished painting, it has a very unusual presentation. That could be the beginning of a series of things that you're used to seeing but not in the presentation. Kind of a, uh, in a slightly surrealistic way, but painted with realism. Mm. It's surrealistic realism. Uh, yeah. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> what are your first paintings or sketches that you ever did when you were first starting out? The first paintings or sketches I ever did when I was starting out, um, they were uh, Charlie Brown. Really? Yeah, I was a huge peanut sound. Fan and, and I actually wanted to be a cartoonist for a while, so I had a uh, I made up a, a, a guy named Freddie Frizzwiz. It was 
was basically <laughs> just a knockoff of Charlie Brown. And um, he also had a dog, like Snoopy. Yeah. But I forget what. And the dog was based off of a stuffed animal that I won at an amusement park. I, I hadn't thought of that in a million years. And his name was uh, Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, you know, I would, love to, I would love to be able to talk about, like, politics and stuff, but this is the stuff that stays in my head. I remember Fluffy from Freddie Frisbee. Is Capturing the other band? You mean these guys? Oh, I don't know if I want to start painting them. <laughs> I'd have to cut them in on it. <laughs> no, actually, you know, I, I mentioned a... Um, the, the other painting that's home, the big canvas, it's a New York City uh, street scene from the 1920s. Well, that painting in the foreground actually has three portraits, and they take up most of the canvas. And the three portraits are three people that are, are very important to me. And they are Charlie Chaplin, Harry Houdini, and then sitting in between them, my father. It's a pretty cool painting. And, and, and I made them all about... 40 years old, and uh, it's it's like the London painting. It's a black and white look, and it has kind of a Norman Rockwell quality to it, where they're all laughing. And um, uh, the it's that painting's probably about 50% finished, but it's you know I could never carry it on the road because it's huge. But um, you know as soon as I finished my dad's portrait, I, I took a photo and emailed it to him, and he got a kick out of it. I made his hair, you know, darker and <laughs> tightened up his chin a little bit. 20 years younger. 20 years younger, yeah. Gave him a hat. Looks like he's right out of The Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Who's the gentleman on the internet? I think it's Roy or... Oh, Roy. Roy. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's asked... Um, on, I have a, a web page, michaelcartoloni.com, where where this work is, is displayed. But there's also some of the earlier paintings... That, um, that have just gone to private collections that I'm not marketing. And there's one painting, um, I called it Roy, which it's, I just made up the name. But it's this, uh, it's this guy who's probably in his 70s or maybe 80s, and he's sitting on an old rickety porch, and he's playing uh, violin. Although by the look of the porch, it would be a fiddle. Um, but this, it's a great old wrinkly guy. That was a fun painting. That's, that's a pretty good-sized painting, too. That's a, that's a big one. Um, I painted that uh, like 1995, I guess. Um, and I, I kind of regret that that I didn't get a really good kind of um, uh, copy of it, you know, because it would have been fun to be able to reproduce that. But, you know, that one's long gone. Um, but I really do, uh, even though I don't do them that often, it, it's – very fun to paint uh, faces. You know, there's there's a lot going on there. And painting my dad was, that was daunting. You know, to paint, you know, John Lennon or to, to paint the Houdini or the Chaplin portraits, you know, there's no connection to that. That's Those are just people that I admired. But to paint my dad, who is living and breathing and is, and is going to stand there and look at it, that was, um, let's just say this, I'm glad that, that, that that part of it is finished. And I'm very happy with the way it came out because it was... You know, I, I realized, oh, man, I'm going to try and paint my dad. That's that's biting off a lot. But it really it came out nice. And we'll be here next year with that one when it's done. Promise. Promise, Michael <laughs> says. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. So uh, Here, here's an idea. Here's an idea, he says. I get one like every quarter. Here's one. <laughs> um, we've had some really cool events here. Oh, wait, honestly, would you say this this is the one? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know I mean, He's just saying that because I'm here. No, no, I'm serious. As soon as I leave, no, it'll be like... No, no, no. I feel like he's never said that before. No. Really? I've never said that before, sincerely. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs>